what's the rule for putting things up too high? Doesn't create that much light. Oh. Hello, my name is Benji and welcome to the second episode of my redecorating series. Also Theo's eating right now, so if you hear some crunching, that's him eating his food. So here is how it looks right now. This area is very empty because there used to be a tall plant here, so that filled up the space. I have three platyceri mounted on the wall. I have this nice little circle mirror that I got recently and I really like it because it looks like a porthole, like I'm in a ship. <laughs> I have this shelf right here. This is my wraparound shelf that I did. I'm very proud of it. I was thinking about removing it, but I do actually really like it and I think it looks cool. And I like that I put it up. Here I'm gonna have a few small plants or like little knickknacks and stuff. I'm gonna be taking everything off the wall except for this mirror and then this shelf. So these are the two fixed elements that I will be working around. I have 10 species that I want to display on this wall. I have my Platycerium superbum, then I have the Elephantotis, and then the Wilinkii. I have two different cultivars of Wilinkii. And then I have a Ridleyi round form, a Stemaria, a Coronarium, and a Madagascariens. So I have a lot of species and I've been really into collecting Platycerium. They make for really beautiful, like, works of art on the wall. One of the first things that people notice when they walk into my apartment are my platycerium because they just look so interesting and intriguing. And first they ask, is it alive? And then they say that it looks like a piece of lettuce or that it looks like a deer head. This is like my little trophy wall, my collection of platycerium. Also, platycerium is the scientific name for staghorn, and I will be using the two words interchangeably throughout this video. So I haven't done a gallery wall before. They're always kind of intimidating to me. It's really important how you configure them on your wall and how you space them out and stuff. I decided to be very thoughtful, which is uh, kind of rare for me. I don't want to have to drill a bunch of holes in my wall and then like mess up and rearrange things. Earlier in the day I measured all of my platycerium boards and then I wrote them down on this little table and then I cut out pieces of paper that represent the platycerium I'm putting up. I put tape on them and this way I can like configure them on the wall how I want um, and then easily be able to take it off and then put it back on because I'm very much a visual person so this helps me a lot to see how it'll look when I actually put the plants up. And I really recommend doing this also for gallery walls, for artwork. It's just a good way to see how something will look before you actually make a hole and then put it up on your wall. I was gonna give you guys a tutorial on how to mount a staghorn fern, but this video is more focused on the arrangement of my gallery wall. In the future, I'll cover my mounting technique in a staghorn care video, but I do a very similar method that is shown in a video by my friend Irene, who is the creator of the channel Leafing Around and I'll leave a link to her video in the description. I often get asked where to get staghorn wood boards, and the one you see here is from an online store called Fern Factory. If you're handy and like working with wood, you could easily make your own boards with cedar or redwood. I'm gonna start taking the things off of this wall and on the shelves, and then bring out my arts and crafts uh, fake paper platyceriums. Now everything is off of this wall. I think it's best and easiest to first put on the largest piece and then use the smaller pieces to work around it. I'm just gonna put them on the wall anywhere right now just to see. My two largest ones are my Superbum and my Wilinkii um, Porter's Hybrid. I'm considering how the Platycerium will actually look on the wall. So like the Wilinkii, it will hang down and like take up portion of this space. I didn't want to put it so close over here because then it'll block the view of all of the platycerium that are over here because of its large extended um, fertile fronds. So I think I want it kind of over here. That way the fronds will slightly hang into the mirror and then reflect it. I think that'll look pretty cool. I also have to consider lighting for the placement of my plants. They are currently lit by my Soltech Solutions Highland track light system. And Soltech Solutions is the sponsor of this video. All of the Soltech lights that I own, I actually purchased myself. And they're actually the only reason why I'm even able to have my platycerium on this wall. Staghorn ferns need a lot of light and when you're growing them indoors, 
they really need some type of light supplementation if they are not like very close to a window. Soltec lights produce a very nice and warm glow and the actual light itself is very attractive. It's very difficult to find these two things in a grow light. The Soltec lights are on the pricier side but the value that they provide in terms of form and function are to my knowledge, unavailable in any other product. As you can see, they blend in seamlessly with my home decor and most people who see these lights don't even know that they are grow lights. I will put the link to Soltec Solutions in the description and you can also use my discount code Benji2022 for 15% off. So I put these lights up myself, I'm very proud of that. They're actually connected to a smart plug so I'm able to turn them off with my voice. So I can say um, echo Grow lights on. Well, pretty cool. <laughs> this light is good. I have it pointing towards the mirror in the corner. So the mirror ends up reflecting more light back to the platycerium. So I think this one would be good here. Let me just do a little test. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I like how it doesn't cover the mirror too much, but it does reflect its leaves in the mirror. Be right here. Okay, let's just start putting on the smaller ones. So the next largest one is my Willinkii Mount Lewis, and I made a typo. Whenever I was in school, I never used pen because I would always make mistakes because um, I think that my hand moves faster than my brain. So I think I am gonna put this one, let's put it right here. For now, I don't think I want anything too low. Maybe I'll put some low stuff here, but not over here because this is where the trash can is. Maybe I'll put like a very small one here. Next, I'm gonna do my coronarium. So this one will have a hanging fertile fronds as well. So maybe you could hang slightly over the mirror, but not too much. <laughs> so I'm sliding it up slowly. Okay, my Madagascariense. Now I'm kind of not sure if I'll be able to fit all 10 on here. <laughs> Maybe if I put them up higher, but what's the rule for putting things up too high? I don't know. So the Madagascariense doesn't have large fertile fronds. It mostly just has shield fronds. So maybe right here, because it won't hang down and cover the um, platycerium down here. I have a little round platycerium that's in a pot, actually. It's in a sphere pot. So that's my Ridley Eye round form. I think it could look good right here. And this would be a good spot for it too because it needs a good amount of light. So that kind of like breaks up the squareness of everything. But then I wonder, is it too close to the round mirror? Yeah, this is my design process. <laughs> So it would look like this. Do you think that looks okay? Oh, maybe it was right here. I think maybe here's a good spot. Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, then my Stamaria. Stamaria does produce long fertile fronds. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have long fertile fronds yet. So I think for now, I could put it up here. Is that too high? No. No? I always like to stand back to look at what I have. I always need to look at it from different angles as well. There's a lot of empty space right here, but I'm going to be putting things on the shelf. So just imagine things here. So there's not going to be as much white space. This one doesn't grow too much, at least not yet. Um, and then I can move it if it does grow too much, but I think this would be a good spot for it. It has more of an upward growth. So I think that is a good spot. Then whatever's down here won't get obstructed by the hanging fertile fronds. I have two more uh, platycerium left. Don't know if they will fit. So I have my elephantotis and my kitschakud. Maybe this? Is that like too tight? Because the kitschakud goes more upward, so I could put it there instead. Then this shape, I think, might be nicer for right here. Hmm. Okay, but then the VCI goes up and the Stamoria goes down, so that might mesh with each other. But they're not large enough right now, so I think this will be fine for a couple of months at least. 
I think I need to move the Willinkia a little bit higher because this Demario is up so high. I'm gonna try that. Now the last one is my Elephantotus. I could put it here. So I like it here, but the Willinkia will go down. Oh, it doesn't block it too much at all. It looks like I'm trying to like solve a crime. I just need those strings that connect to each other. So I'm actually going to think about its configuration throughout the rest of the day and then come back to this tomorrow morning. And then that's when I'll put the actual plants up. I always like to have a good sleep over big decisions. See you guys tomorrow. Hello. So it is the next day now and I didn't change anything about the wall. I think I like how it is and it's a little difficult to fully imagine what it's gonna look like with the stack run ferns actually on the wall. So we're gonna start drilling holes in the wall and putting the stack run ferns up. And then if I don't like it afterwards, I can still move things around. Okay, I'm pretty excited. We'll start with the Willinkie eye. So this is what I'm using. It's just pretty simple anchors and nails. These are just plastic drywall anchors. Platysterium aren't that heavy. I bet this is less than 10 pounds and I just watered this one. So the media is fully saturated and it's still not that heavy. So you could probably use command hooks to hang these up. That look good, Chris. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So I'm gonna use my pencil and put, so I'm gonna use my pencil and put the stack run fern up on the wall and then mark where I'm gonna drill the hole. So I'm just using my drill and this drill bit that works with the anchors that I'm using. Okay. Now I'm just putting in my little anchor. First one up. How's it look? Oh yeah, it looks cool. Ooh, it's looking cool already. You think? Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Wait, I need to stand back. Ooh. Nice. Should we turn on the lights just to see? Mmm, nice. <laughs> okay, next one. Wow. So I really like how it's looking already. I think that the platysterium being next to each other really shows off their different characteristics. I really like it so far. The configuration is nice. Okay, can't wait to finish the next ones. So <laughs> It's cute. Can you see me in the mirror? <laughs> Who do I talk to? Maybe I'll take this one out of this round pot. I don't know, I think it looks kind of strange. I made this hook out of bonsai wire, but I'm just going to use the drainage layer as like a place to hang the pot from. Do you think it should be next to the mirror though? Or should I? Because this one's here, right? And so, right here. Okay. So, now I gotta make another hole. Oops. Trial and error. I think it's cute. Yeah? Ooh, yee. That's pretty cool, like a different way to mount it. My mind. Very innovative, Benjamin. <laughs> okay, next one. <laughs> kind of a lot of empty space, right? here, but this one, this is my coronarium, um, it'll send down longer fertile fronds in time. So it'll cover it up. Okay, this one is next. I'm kind of sweaty right now and it's hot because whenever I film, I turn off the AC because the AC is super, super loud and it kind of messes up the audio. So yeah, I have my cold water here, um, but if I look sweaty, uh, that's why. <laughs> now we only have one more to go, then we'll put some stuff on the shelf. 
the last one. <laughs> I can't see. What do we think? <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, let's turn the light on. Yay, I've been thinking about this for so long. I'm happy that it's finally, you know, complete. Well, not fully. Maybe I could add more. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna clean all of the dust stuff up and then put the furniture back and then put some things on the shelf. And I'm gonna turn the AC back on while I do that. <laughs> I was looking at the wall from afar and I felt like it kind of just cut off right here and then there's just so much empty space underneath. So I have this other platycerium. I think it would fit perfectly right here. So now I'm gonna put some things on the shelf. So first I'm thinking of this little moss orb. I think it would work well here because it's not too tall so it still gives space for this potasserium right here and it's not going to grow or anything so this is a good spot for it. I want to put this terrarium here as well. This was one of the first like little terrariums I made. Oh actually I think I want it over here. I also want my Dioscoria elephantipes here because this one this is my first ever codex plant and this got me into codex and it needs a good amount of light and it's perfect here because it's getting all this light from the Soltec lights. To make it look less like placed, 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 I'm gonna put small little objects in between them. I have these little Tetero figurines that I got from the Ghibli exhibit here in Los Angeles. Little guy right here and then put his little acorn next to him. Oh wait, I'm gonna get a, a soot sprite. I have these little set sprites, put them right here. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have this moss terrarium right here. And then I'll put this uh, ceramic next to it. So this ceramic I got while thrifting in Santa Cruz, which is my college town. And there were two of them and I got one with my friend Zoe. Um, so she has the other one and I bought it for like $2, but then I posted it on my Instagram story and someone told me that this is by a well-known ceramicist and I found it on eBay and it's like 60 bucks. Also, whenever I see this, it reminds me of my friend Zoe and I think about her and I think about how the other one is doing. I'm pretty sure she still has it. And this little guy, this is a forest spirit from Princess Mononoke, another Ghibli movie. It's one of my favorite Ghibli movies. And I like him here because it kind of looks like he's looking up at the platycerium. <laughs> this mushroom lamp. It's not really that useful, like it doesn't create that much light, oh, but it looks really cool. Okay, well, I guess that's it. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Whenever I like plan things in my head for a while and I have this image of how it's gonna look, I always get kind of nervous when the time actually comes around where it's finished and I'm not sure if I'll like it or not, but I'm really happy to say that I am very pleased with this and I think it's gonna look really cool once they've grown up a bit. The more that they mature, the more you can see their unique characteristics between each species. The next video in the series is going to be redecorating the living room, and I actually already did that. Um, I just need to edit the footage. Thank you so much for watching. I've really been enjoying this series. Thank you to Soltec for sponsoring this video. Love the lights. Couldn't have these platycerium here without them. Okay, bye-bye.